So now let's start a new chapter. It's called application of trigonometry in your textbook and in many other books it's also called heights and distances. So you have already learned the basic definitions of sine, cos, tan and you've done a few problems using them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the same concepts and use them to solve simple practical problems. Before we start I would like to tell you a few of the applications of trigonometry that we are going to use. Okay. So now, one particular concept which I'd like to emphasize is, see generally what happens is, most of the time, very intellectual people, people who are thinking a lot, are not given that much or were not given that much importance. Okay. But increasingly it became obvious that when there was a war, when things were like really urgent, then those countries, those kingdoms which had respected their intellectuals, which had cultivated their intellectuals, had better technologies, better techniques and better ways of solving problems. Okay, so gradually people started recognizing that it's important to encourage people who think and people who can think well to solve various kinds of problems. All right, it's something like uh, if you recognize that you have to be strong, you start going to the gym, right? So you go to the gym and you lift all kinds of weights, which in day-to-day -day life, perhaps you will never have to. But because you value strength, you go to the gym. Same way, kings and various uh, other people, rich people, started cultivating intellectuals. People who had a particular expertise in a subject. Started giving them proper money, proper resources, so they could focus all their attention in studying and developing their ideas and subjects. Now, one such effort led to trigonometry, right? So what could be the possible applications? What could be the possible advantages of studying this? Let me just tell you. One advantage, especially in the time of war or something, would be that suppose you are in a port, okay? You are at a port and at some height, maybe in a lighthouse or something, and you see an enemy ship far away. Now, using basic trigonometry, you can very quickly estimate how far away that particular ship is. And a little while later, let's say the ship approaches a little closer. By studying that position, using basic trigonometry in the same chapter, you will be able to calculate how fast the ship is approaching the port. Now, that kind of information, if it can be done quickly, can be very, very useful. Right? Even today, in the current uh, scenario, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, techniques are used and also for airplanes okay so let's say there is a radar there's a radar here and it locates a plane at a particular distance and after some time the plane is coming here right so one is using trigonometry and the other is other techniques also have come in now using which you can find out how fast it's approaching how far it is but in this chapter we'll use basic trigonometry to find out that if a plane is coming towards you and your its angle of approach changes with certain time you'll be able to calculate the velocity of that plane all right now this by itself i think is interesting enough but trigonometry has a really large set of uses it's a very very general thing it's almost like algebra it's used in so many fields okay you know that mathematics is the language of is the tool or the language uh, for physics right you can't understand physics very well unless you know trigonometry very well unless you know mathematics different branches of mathematics very well so one very interesting thing which occurs is let's say there is an incline okay there's an inclined plane something like a block and on that i have put a small weight right now what happens it is being pulled down by gravity and part of that pull is along the plane and part of it keeps it stuck to the plane. So these two things are known as the components of that force, components of that pull. Now this kind of a concept is used for almost all kinds of vectors, for velocity, for displacement, for force, all kinds of vectors. All right, so there again we use trigonometry. You'll be studying that very soon, perhaps in the next class itself. All right, when I say next class, I mean class 11th or something, all right? Then another very interesting thing is sinusoids. How often in studying different uh, 
phenomena we come across sinusoids let me give you one example okay consider consider a rod okay let's say it's transparent and at the end of it is a opaque ball and this particular rod is rotating at a certain rate okay say one round per second or something and let's say we have light coming from this side and right here i have kept some kind of a screen so that i can see the shadow of this ball so now as this rotates from here it comes here the shadow will go from here up to this point then as it comes down here the shadow will come down as it comes from here to here the shadow will go further down and as it comes back here the shadow will come back up so you can see that as this rotates the shadow keeps on going up and down almost as if it was oscillating this particular concept is used in studying oscillations let me enhance that idea let me extend that idea now suppose i take a time axis okay and every quarter of a second let me try to note the position of the ball so at the beginning it's here after 1/4 of a second it's here after another 1/4 of a second it's here after another 1/4 of a second it's down here after another 1/4 of a second it's here now if all these positions are connected you get a graph like this so as this keeps on rotating it keeps on generating this graph now if it becomes faster you will see the graphs become more crowded and as it becomes slower the graph kind of spaces out this particular shape is known as a sinusoid okay so you will study many things which will use sinusoids for explanations so i hope that kind of kind of convinces you this is something extremely interesting but you have to go step by step for it to become clear to you for it to become useful to you all right so let us go to the first concept required to study this chapter